I'm so glad that we can be together today. Please remember that no matter who you are or where you are on your spiritual journey, you're always welcome to worship with us here at Wilton Congregational Church. I'm Reverend Ann. I'm the senior minister here at WCC. Merry Christmas. We are so grateful that you are with us for this Christmas service. In our worship time today, you'll be hearing from our Minister of Christian Formation, Reverend Caroline Ainsworth Hughes, and WCC new members, Jeff Imry and Tyra Kvanova. Director of Music, Eugene Sorotkin and Callie Sorrento have provided our music for today, and Eugene has edited this service. George Wong and Paul Schmidt have managed the recording in our WCC sanctuary. I just want to give you a quick reminder about stewardship. We are coming to the end of 2020, and we are asking for pledges to support our 2021 budget. As you know, it costs about $3,500 a day to maintain all of the offerings that we do here at WCC. If you have not already pledged, I invite you to do so. You can just do that by sending, emailing your pledge to stewardship at wiltoncongregational.org. And if you've already pledged, thank you so much for your support. We love to hear from you, so please keep in touch, keep your contact information updated with us so that we can make sure that you know everything that's going on in the life of WCC. Let us now worship our God together with joy. The scripture lesson is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 in the New Testament Bible. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each in his own city. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave him birth to her first son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Here ends the scripture lesson.
And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from the heaven, them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with, ha with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Here ends the scripture lesson. Merry Christmas! After weeks of waiting and praying, drawing closer to this moment, we are finally here at Christmas. This week I've been thinking about and listening for bells, just like this one. I've heard bells in shops as I've walked around doing a last minute shop for a friend or a family member, and it helped me remember to think of those that I love. I heard bells rung by the angels in our Christmas pageant sharing the good news of Jesus' birth with everyone. I heard bells on fire trucks as firefighters race to help those in danger without thinking of their own safety. I heard bells from the Salvation Army kettle calling to all of us to think of those who need a little extra help this season. And of course, I heard bells here in our sanctuary. Up in our steeple, our bell rings out all day long so that we can hear it here in our church and across our town, reminding us that this is our church home, calling us back to this place. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, a poet, said that bells are the voice of the church. And I think he got it half right. Bells, of course, are the sound that we associate with churches and especially this church, but I think bells are only part of it. I think that we, you and me, are the voices of the church that it's our voices that go out from this place and share the good news of God's love for us, the good news of Jesus' birth in a Bethlehem manger all those years ago. And so I hope that bells might remind us of the angels' good news, but today and this week and this year, I hope that bells remind us to go out into the world to share the best news of all, that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that God came down and was born in a, as a baby to love us just the way we are. Would you say a prayer with me? Gracious God, we thank you that you give us sounds like bells to remind us of the ways that you love us and the ways that you send us out into the world to share your good news. So on this Christmas Eve, send us out into the world to share that message with those we love, with those we know, and with those we don't know, letting everyone know of your love for us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Angels, we have heard on sweetly singing of all things, and the mountains in reply echo back the joyous strings.
bow your heads in prayer with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations that are in each of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh Lord, are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It was Christmas time, and little Johnny had asked his parents for a new bicycle. His mother thought that this presented a good opportunity for Johnny to reflect on his behavior over the past year. So she said, well, honey, our money's a little tight this Christmas. We can't just buy anything that you want. So why don't you write a letter to Jesus about your bicycle? So Johnny went up to his room to write a letter. This is what he wrote. Dear Jesus, I've been a good boy this year, and I would appreciate a new bicycle. Your friend, Johnny. Well, Johnny knew that this wasn't totally honest, so he tore up the letter and tried again. Dear Jesus, I've thought about being a good boy this year, and can I have a new bicycle? Best regards, Johnny. But now, Johnny was really looking deep into his heart and remembering several events over the past year. This is what his mother was hoping for. So he crumpled up that second letter and he went downstairs. He walked around his house, he grabbed up one of the Christmas decorations, ran up to his room and hid it under his bed. Then he wrote this letter. Jesus, I haven't been that good. I've broken my sister's toys, and I've shot spit wads in school, but I'm desperate, Jesus, and I've got your mother. If you ever want to see her again, give me a bike. Yours truly, you know who. I love this story, and I know that I've probably told it before. This story always reminds me of how we can act when we are not getting what we want and how we sometimes think that we can bargain with God. I think this year, a lot of us have wanted to bargain with God. We have wanted this pandemic to be over. We have wanted the political wangling to stop. We've realized that life was not that bad a year ago or 10 years ago. We've said, why can't life go back to the way it was before? But that is not what has happened. We did get a vaccine before Christmas, but it will be a while before many of us are able to get that vaccine. We are at the end of a difficult year that has brought darkness to many. But Christmas is here. In a year when so much has been disrupted, school, work, friendships, family, Christmas is here. And even though this year we may celebrate Christmas differently, we may not be able to gather with family and friends, Christmas is not different. The truth of Christmas never changes. We hear it in these words from the Gospel of John as he wrote about the birth of Jesus. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The scriptures that we have heard read to us by Jeff and Tyra are so familiar that it can be hard to hear them with fresh ears. But they tell a story that's filled with wonder. A young woman gives birth to a baby in a stable in an overcrowded city. Angels announce this birth as something extraordinary. Shepherds and wise men hear this news from God 
and they seek to find this baby. They see him with Mary, his mother, and Joseph, and they know that they must worship him. Somehow, they could see that the word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Too often we forget how Jesus gives light to each of us and how we can let God's light shine through us. We can be generous. We can be kind. We can be thoughtful. We can consciously choose actions that let God's light shine through us. There is a reason why the motto of WCC is lighting the way. The people of this church have been shining God's light in Wilton for almost 295 years. Light is powerful. Even the smallest light drives the darkness away. Some of you may remember the months of November and December in 1989, when the communist Russian hold over Eastern Europe fell apart. But do you realize the role that the Christian churches and that light itself had in this transformation? In both East Germany and Romania, it was candlelight processions spilling out of churches that prompted the crowds to march peacefully and ultimately led the Soviet-controlled governments to topple. It was on Christmas Eve, after a Romanian church had gathered for candlelight service, that the communist soldiers came to take the pastor. The people lined up outside the church, 10, 15, 20, 30 people deep, encircling the church and saying, if you come after the pastor, you have to get us first. The soldiers could not get in. They could not move the people. The candlelight processions began to move through the cities and those candles, that light, began to spread. And others came out to join in. And courage came to each of those people. At the end of this worship service, our sanctuary will be dark. And you will see how the candles of the Advent wreath, representing God's gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love, and the central candle representing Christ is Emmanuel. And you'll see how their light shines in the darkness of our sanctuary. Because it's important to remember that Christ is Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. His light always shines in us. His light always shines through us. This is what Christmas means. I encourage you, this day, every day, let the light of Christ shine through you. Amen. Would you please join with me in our Christmas prayer? God of starlight, of the manger, of joy to the entire world, tonight is a joyful night, a night of candlelight and cherished traditions, of choruses of alleluias strung out across the centuries, and tonight is a holy night, 
a night of dreaming and of dreams come true. We thank you that you are present with us this day, wherever we find ourselves. That in the mystery of your love and power, you connect us each to another across space and time. We feel that connection now and are grateful for our siblings in faith, our family with whom we worship. Thank you for the way that you have been moving in our lives and for the sights and sounds of this season. They give us glimmers of you, God. Thank you for the decorated trees we see in windows and in our town, for the beginnings of a vaccine and for those who have cared for others this entire pandemic. Thank you for the familiar sounds of our Christmas pageant and for those who worked to put it on, for Christmas cards and tidings shared across the country and around the world. We thank you that the words of the prophet are true again this year, that a young woman would bear a son, the Prince of Peace, and would call him Emmanuel, God with us. And yet we know that for too many, God, tonight is a cold and lonely night, a hungry night. We pray that in the midst of our joy and hope, you be with those holding grief, fear, anger, and doubt. Be with those spending their Christmas in a hospital and with the medical staff and frontline workers serving to get them well. Be with those spending Christmas alone. May we see them. May we know them, and may we welcome them into our lives. Be with families for whom holidays are stressful, too expensive and too fraught with conflict. Grant them peace, comfort, and assurance of your presence this day. God of starlight, thank you for the reminders in music, bells, scripture, lights, and the smell of evergreens that you are here continuing to transform your world. That once again, you send your son, Jesus Christ, into our world, born to us as a baby in a manger, that we might know your love. Thank you for the gift of love made known in him. And now we offer up the prayer that he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Oh. 
In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Will you bow your heads for the benediction? And now go into the world in peace, declaring the praises of God who has called you out of darkness into wonderful light. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen.